The Space Shuttle used around 400,000 lines of code. The International Space Station uses 1.4 million lines of code for in-flight operations and 3 million lines of code for on-ground support. The Curiosity rover that's exploring Mars uses 2.5 million lines of embedded code. Not only that, in space, the margin for error is zero. To avoid bugs in the scenarios, NASA developed 10 rules to write better code. In this video, we will apply them to a JavaScript code base and see what can we learn from the space agency that can make us better engineers. Rule number one, simple control flow, basically avoiding complex constructs like recursion. NASA says we should not use recursive functions like this one. As we see, factorial will end up calling factorial again. Imagine we would have a very, very big number. This function can really get out of control and we would end up with a stack over flow error because we have way too many functions calling each other all being handled by the limited stack memory instead write every recursive behavior as a loop in this case we can write it as a for loop and also be done with a while loop very important for you as a javascript developer or developer interviewing right now make sure you can translate from recursive function to an iterative approach with a for or a while loop rule number two all loops must have fixed limits we've seen that we should them be using recursion but NASA goes even farther and says whenever we have a loop like in this case I have a while loop we will add a hard limit to it in this case we look at the while loop it's basically saying while the element in the array is not equal to a specific target keep increasing i in the case in which the target it's never in the array this while loop will be infinite and basically the program will collapse it will fail it will end up in an unpredictable state instead of this NASA says we should add hard limits to our while or for loops. In this case, we could use the array length as a hard limit and rewrite this code like this, where we actually go only up to the array length. So this loop can never become what they call runaway code. You can never go into like an infinite loop that goes on ever and ever. And then the program ends up failing. But NASA goes even farther and says that you can even add a constant of max iterations and have no loop, either that's a for or a while loop go higher than that so basically in every loop condition you'd actually say never go past the array length in this case but also if the array length is bigger than the max iteration stop never go more than whatever this constant is again a lot of code nasa writes runs on very limited embedded devices with very limited memory but these lessons you can extrapolate to our modern application going farther rule number three do not use heap memory well if you're a javascript developer you'd ask yourself what what do you mean i mean we never allocate memory in javascript and they say use the stack memory instead but if you're using c and you are actually allowed to allocate memory you're also responsible to free that memory and the problem is as a developer you might forget to free it now going back to what is the heap the heap is a big space of unstructured memory and let's say we end up saving a variable here if we forget to free it up that memory will always be busy and so imagine we get this big chunk of memory and we forgot to free it up or we're still referencing we ended up maybe running up out of memory and this is why nasa says that it's better to use the stack but what does that really mean well that means that instead of referencing or putting variables in the heap you should pass them as function arguments and when they go passed in as a function argument they go into the stack as the function code and the argument the cool thing is that whenever this function finished it will be removed from the stack so we know for sure that memory will be freed automatically so this is a way for them to tell you that you should not allocate memory manually now if you're JavaScript developer, this is not really relevant, but you could actually apply this to your functional code. Instead of using global variables that will stay in the heap memory for a long time, prefer using local ones. That's one of the most important rules. But I want to talk about this rule number three, which is basically passing variables as arguments rather than enclosing them. Basically, in JavaScript, we do this a lot. We might have a function that takes an argument and we're using a variable that was enclosed, that it's in the same scope and it was enclosed by this function to create a result. The problem is this variable right here will stay in the heap memory for a very, very long time. Instead of this, we could pass greeting as an argument or just declare it as a constant inside the function scope. In this way, we know that whenever great aliens is not being used anymore, the memory gets freed up and there's nothing in the heap. So this goes a bit against traditional JavaScript way of writing code where we enclose many things and try to avoid closures as they're very heavy on the memory.
And by the way, if you are a JavaScript developer interviewing right now, or you want to find your technical gaps in order to get to senior level, take our free 10 minutes technical assessment. It will basically show you what are your gaps and how you can close them to get to senior level or help you prepare for upcoming interviews. Link it in the comments. Let's go with number four, restrict functions to a single page. That is 60 lines of code. Basically what they say is you shouldn't have any function that is bigger than a printed page. In this case, I have a bit of a spaghetti code that calculates some trajectory and we can apply solid principles to split it into four different functions that can be used independently. This simplifies code and it's basically applying a single responsibility principles from solid. This is something very useful in everyday code. It will make your code more maintainable and more usable and more testable and a very important skill for interviewing. Number five, use a minimum of two runtime assertions per function. So what? We don't usually have runtime assertions in JavaScript. What we do have are type assertions in TypeScript. Basically what they are saying is that whenever we have a function receiving a certain argument, rather than assuming that in this case A and B will be both numbers, we should actually check that. And you can do this with console.assert. The cool thing about this is that if this assertion fails, your code will actually be able to recover gracefully, what they call graceful degradation. Because whenever one of those fails, it's a subroutine that will be triggered and the program can fail in a controlled manner and restart itself. If by any chance this ends up being a string and we do not have these two assertions, we might run into very unpredictable behavior, which is something NASA cannot afford. Can you apply this to your current code base? Well, not really, but just keep in mind that not only you can assert the type of variables at development time with TypeScript, but you can also write manual assertions if you're really writing some critical code and make your code fail if at runtime your function as we receive the specific arguments with the specific type. Going forward, number six, declare variables in the smallest scope possible. This basically says avoid having global variables because global variables are just like global state. They can be modified by pretty much any other function and this can lead to very unpredictable situations. So try to lower those things to where they're actually being used and only make things available as close as to where they're being used. Lifting them up can cause very unpredictable behavior but also consumes a lot of memory. So rather than having this, we could actually lower those constants to their specific functions. And in that way, we know that these functions can't affect each other. So try to keep things as private as possible and put them in the lowest scope possible. Number seven, check the return value of all non-void functions or indicate something really returns void if it doesn't return anything. Basically, they're saying you shouldn't use something in a way that is not being specified to use and always make sure you specify explicitly that something returns void. This is is not something you can directly extrapolate to JavaScript. But if you can take something out of this is that you really want to be very explicit sometimes about how your functions behave and make very little assumptions. Number eight, use the preprocessor sparingly. They are referring to the C preprocessors. But how can we bring this to the JavaScript world? Well, basically in JavaScript nowadays, we have all this polyfilling that basically takes our code right, and adds polyfill in this case, for example, to mimic the spread operator in a browser that doesn't support it. Our final code will look like this. Right, so that console log got transformed to this. Now, good luck if there's an error finding out where was this error exactly. Not only that, but this introduces a lot of performance problems. One of the reasons it's hard to debug JavaScript is because we always need source maps, which are those files that kind of connect these two pieces. So what they are saying is be careful with all this tooling. It adds complexity. And the problem here is that the code you wrote is not the code running in production, which means who knows, it might fail because of unpredictable reasons, um, or it would be really hard to debug. What you can take out of this is that there is always a price for using code preprocessors, in our case, module bundles like Webpack or type TypeScript compiler or Babel and be careful with them. Use as little as possible to make sure your code is easy to debug in production. Number nine, restrict reference pointers to one level. This basically means do not have objects referencing another object, another object, and finally the value. In this case, we have Rocket and to get a trust, I go over to my Rocket engine, which serves to the record rocket.engines, which basically is referencing back to this. They are saying that even experienced programmers can end up making very big mistakes here because you can easily end up modifying this value without wanting to, which will change this one, and it just can be a disaster. So avoid that and really try to reference things directly as much as you can to a one level reference. That means really accessing the object that has the property that we declare it 15 times. And finally, compile with all the possible warnings active. That means if you get a warning, if your TypeScript code fails, if your link 
intervals are failing. If you're static code analysis, if you're using Sonic, your fails, don't just compile, try to make it work and ship it to production. I know people do that because we all have delivery pressure, but that's a bad practice. Fix everything. Don't have warnings, don't have errors in your code. It's a very bad habit. And there's no point in establishing code quality tools if we don't use them in our CI/CD process. This was it, folks. Use this in your code and use them as a reference for what good code or stable code looks like. This was Bogdan from the Senior Dev, and I'll see you in the next one.